Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome back, welcome back. I can see you guys streaming in. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Just let just let me uh, um just let me just uh notify everyone that we are live across a uh, couple of our Telegram channels. All right. It's awesome. I see a whole bunch of you guys coming in. All right. Um pull up the chat. Um, you guys can test out the QA uh panel or even the chat panel. Right, they'll see if I can see the messages that you guys sent through. If, if you don't mind, right, uh, maybe just uh, let me know where uh, where are you guys coming from, which countries you guys are coming from, right? Um, right, Olivier, I can see you, All right? I can see uh, I can see your questions come through. Good stuff. I'm, I'm not, I, I believe you guys might have access to the chat, um, to the chat um, panel, right? See if you can see it, right? Clement from Nigeria, nice to see you, man. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I can see. I can see you guys. Ikao from, from we got uh Ghana from Hamado from UK, Shapo from South Africa, Anand from India, Philippines. Right. Mark Philippines. Richie Philippines. Nice. Quite a number of guys from Ghana and Philippines. Switzerland. Oh, Olivia's from Switzerland. Good stuff, man. Yeah, that's good stuff. I last time I visited Switzerland. Yeah, I think I I went to, I think Geneva. Yeah, Geneva. Right, <laughs> really, really nice place. Really nice place, right? I got Tanzania, right? I got Philippines also. Uh, Lavinia from Scotland, awesome stuff, man. Awesome stuff. South Africa too. Ah, quite a number of you guys in South Africa. That's nice. I also visited Philippines. I think I went to, I was on some kind of mission trip to uh, a Smoky Island. Uh, is that is that what is it called? I think it's Smoky Island or something, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Nice to see you guys tune in. All right, nice to see you guys tune in. Oh, we got guys from Turkey too. All right, Raul also from Philippines. Nice, nice. All right, it'll be a nice session today. I'm not sure if you guys know where I'm tuning in. Uh, which country I'm tuning in from? All right, if you can, if you can guess correctly, you know, maybe get a price. Oh shit, that's that's fast. Crap. Oh, Smoky Mountain. Right, was it Smoky Mountain? Oh man. Okay, you guys can guess fast. Right, how do I know? How do you know? <laughs> I, I got nothing to uh, say that for Singapore here. Okay, got Tanzania, right? Albania. Nice. You got people from all over the world. Welcome, welcome. Now nah, I'm not from Taiwan. Oh, uh, unless Rich is from Taiwan. Oh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay, good stuff. Now let, let me share my, share my screen with you guys. All right. Let me just share my screen really quickly with you guys. Um, see if you can see my screen here. Right, you, you guys should be able to see my screen, right? Um, we're live streaming on YouTube too, right? Take me official YouTube, so fun stuff over there, right? Those of you guys who are there, you know, uh, welcome, uh, welcome to our ultimate forex trading masterclass, right? So, uh, today's uh, this is a um, I think it'll be a session for the entire year, right? It'll be a session for the entire year, every two weeks, one to two weeks, right? Uh, we will touch on. Uh, we'll, be, we'll start the beginning with the beginner kind of um, sessions and we'll work our way up uh, to the more advanced sessions. So it, um, if you will join me on this journey, it'd be a very exciting time, right? Where I can really take your trading to the next level, right? And I'll be showing, I'll be sharing with you guys a little bit more about my background, why, um, why uh, I'll be doing my best to take you guys, uh, you know, to be um, whatever trading stage you are in, you know, whether you're sl unprofitable, slightly profitable, really profitable, how you can increase the, your profitability, you know, take you to the next level of, um, of um, trading Forex, trading futures, trading indices, right? Trading these things profitably and, um, and ideally, of course, full time in the future. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, anyone here for the first time though, is anyone here um, for the first time? This is the, our second session. Right, so I'm not sure if anyone is here for the first time. Yeah, I think um, I think now that we're doing it on the YouTube live, right? Um, the recording should be available for your reference, right? Yep, that's right, that's right. First time, first time. Oh, awesome! Many of you guys are first time. Welcome, welcome. Right, it'll be a journey. It'll be a nice journey that we have together. Right. Um, I hope to see you guys week in week out. Um, I'll be showing you guys how to get access to um the VIP. Uh, take meal room, which should be launching in uh, probably the middle of May, towards the end of May, right? Um, that's where you can join me and my team uh, with, uh, and we can guide you to be um, on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, you can run your analysis by us, you can practice, you can teach you. All right. Now, anyway, let's, uh, without further ado, let's begin uh, today's session. Oh, second time. Nice to see a couple of you guys second time. 
welcome back. Welcome back, Agnes. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, for today's session, Technical Analysis 101, this is me, your host for today, Desmond Leong. Right. So we are finalists for the, um, you can draw, you have a pen here. Yeah, so we are finalists for 2019, 2020, 2021 for Best FX Research and 2020 and 2021 for Best Equity Research um, um, awarded by the Technical Analyst Awards. Right, so I run a team here at Everest Fortune Group, right? Uh, institutional Research House. Uh, we usually send our research to the largest banks and brokers out there, right? But we have a special partnership with Take Mill where we are bringing you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, you know, the stuff that will take your trading to the next level. All right. Then, if, if, if there's anything I want to uh, encourage you guys, is that you don't need um, 30 years being in Bloomberg, you don't need 30 years learning a CFA, you know, masters in uh, finance and stuff like that. You know, all you need to do is to spend 30 days learning the right stuff and you can take a trading to the next level. I'm a relatively young guy. I'm, come on, I'm, I'm 32 years old, right? I'm going to be a dad anytime this week, right? <laughs> going to be a dad anytime this week uh, over the next uh, four days, actually, right? Just waiting for my wife, right? And yeah. You know, thank you, Martio. Thank you, <laughs> right? Thank you, Alan. Right? <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Right? So yeah, you know, I'm spending that the my days leading up to my wife giving birth. You know, <laughs> with you guys, right? And you know, if I need to, if I if I get a call and I need to rush off halfway, you know that you know, <laughs> she'd be like, "Hey, my water bag broke," right? <laughs> and I need to rush over. Yeah. <laughs> um. There is a recording. It's on GoToWebinar. No, it's on Zoom. I, I, I will get the TechMill team to upload it uh, and put it into a nice little playlist for us to kind of um, go through together, right? Um, yeah, 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 Richie, I did, right? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name him Elliot, right? After Elliot Wave. <laughs> right? No, 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 I'm not going to name him Elliot. <laughs> That'd be terrible. <laughs> My wife would kill me, right? Uh, all right, man, all right. So yeah, you know, uh, let's let's begin today's session. It'll be an awesome time, right? I I can let you guys know that now I'm trading full time myself, right? Um, profitably took me a long time. It, it didn't take me thirty days, right? It took me over seven years, uh, to learn how to trade. But I learned. I went through the hard stuff and made the mistakes, so that you don't need to make the mistakes. And I run a uh a research firm that sends our reports to the largest banks out there, largest brokers out there, right? Really, uh, we we have all the awards. You know, we we are great. But I've done the filtering to know which are the correct things to look at, which are the correct analysis, uh, technical analysis to look at, fundamental analysis to look at, what are things to focus on, you know? Because that's a dangerous thing about trading. You know, it's, 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 unlike, it's unlike studying, right? Studying, you know, we, we are, we're trained in our world of academia where studying, you know, we can learn the right stuff. We can never learn the wrong stuff when it comes to studying. But the tricky thing about trading, right? The tricky thing about trading is that you can learn the wrong stuff. Right, you can, you can, you can spend all this time learning maybe about gun angles, and then realize that gun angles actually make you trip um unprofitably, right? So that's a dangerous thing, right? In trading, remember, the one of the worst things to do in life is is to run full speed, in the wrong direction, all right? To run full speed in the wrong direction, so. Take your time, get your bearings right, learn the right stuff, then apply it correctly. Even when you talk about stuff like trend lines, support and resistance, supply and demand, Fibonacci, right, um, Elliott wave, there are correct ways and there are wrong ways to apply it, right? And the world in, in the world of Instagram, you know, you see a lot of Instagram traders out there. You can really, really learn the wrong stuff. There are a lot of wrong stuff there, right? Now we're bringing you this series, um, to Tick Mill, where we're gonna teach you guys the right stuff. Right, the stuff that I've used myself, right, and I've taken my training to the next level, right, and I believe you know as we work through this together, week in, week out, we practice, we practice, you know, you can take your trading to the next level too. It'll be a fun time, right? It'll be a fun time. You you might get sick of hearing me, <laughs> hearing my voice and seeing me, uh, by the end of the year, right? But it'll be a fun time where you know we'll we'll go through this journey together. Yeah, I I look forward to seeing a lot more of you guys around. Now, let's move on. Okay, what what do we expect in today's session all right so i'm just going to touch really quickly right and this is this is the important thing you know we need to go back to the basics of technical analysis right because sometimes people focus too much on there's nothing wrong with technical analysis i love technical analysis my forte is in technical analysis but um the the danger is that there's a lot of in the world of technical analysis you can learn a lot of wrong stuff right so we're going to look at what is technical analysis right the different types 
of technical analysis, you know, the indicators, the oscillators, the trend lines, the charts, the calculations, right? Uh, what are the different ones? Which one works best? Which one, in my personal opinion, doesn't work that well, right? Then we will be combining them together, right? Combine them together and, um, and yeah, you know, I'll show you how there's this concept of confluence, right? When you combine them together, you can actually uh, get pretty good, uh, decent kind of setups, yeah? But all right, now let's uh, begin. Uh, let's begin today's session. All right, guys. So, what exactly is technical analysis? Right. So let's let's just focus on, on what is technical analysis. Right. So, in in the world of trading, you know, there is there's usually two camps. Right. There's the fundamental analysis. Right. So there are guys over here who are the fundamental analysts. Right. And there's the guys over here which are the technical analysts. Right. Although most of the time they seem like two different camps, they actually work pretty well together, right? The guys over at the fundamental analysts, right? Um, they they love to look at the news, right? If you've ever seen the economic news calendar, you know what I mean, what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can put it up, you know, um, for you guys in real time, all right? Uh, a tick meal economic calendar, all right. Okay, for example, over here, um, take meal economic calendar. Uh, I really, really love take meal economic calendar. It's kind, of, it's a lot nicer, neater than um, than what most people have, right? So yeah, it's a nice little economic calendar. Shows you what are the upcoming things for the day, what are the high impact news orders, right? No high impact news events, right? Um, over here you can see, you know, it's pretty cool stuff, right? And can scroll through economic news events. These are things that let me can toggle to the week. I love to look at it from a week format. Yeah, so you can see what are the important news events for the week. So the, 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 the people who trade fundamentals, they really, really like to look at this, right? They like to, um, uh, they like to analyze a little bit of the, um, it actually borrows this theory from econometrics. Econometrics, right? Where you look at stuff like the CPI data, PPI data, you know, the trial forecast was a, a non-farm payroll, the, they look at interest rate decisions, right? Fundamental analysis, okay? So there's that camp which is the fundamental analyst. Then there is the camp where is the technical anal analyst. And technical analysis are stuff like um, charts. So, you know, you can be looking at stuff like this, right? Charts are over here, you know, got a different charts, different charts, different charts, right? This is the world of the technical analyst, okay? So two different, uh, two different camps, but they are both working towards the same goal, right? Um, um, it's not economy matrix, right? Actually, it's all econo econometric. Yeah, econometrics. This is the this is the term econometrics, where statistical methods to analyze economic data, right? If you really really love math, you can do it. I actually did a lot of um. I actually dug quite deep into econometrics to try to forecast stuff like uh CPI, PPI, you know, all the different kind of news releases. But I can honestly tell you it's pretty tough. <laughs> and actually not that, not that accurate, not that accurate, right? Especially at, at least in the world of FX in, in trading, right? What we'll be focusing on today is technical analysis, right? Uh, technical analysis. So the concept of technical analysis is, you know, we're looking at charts, right? We're looking at charts. And the basis of looking at charts is that there are, there are many ways you can interpret price. There's many ways you can interpret um, the charts that you see. For example, for example, if I'm going to pull out my chart over here, right, and I notice, and you know, it is not by, it is not by any stroke of um, coincidence that if you look at it over here, this reversal back in August 20, um, August 2020, and this reversal back in, um, in, in March 2022, happened at around the same time, uh, at about the same level. If I draw a line all the way across, it's, it's just about at the same level, right? You know, pretty close. Now, it is not by chance that this occurred. It's by technical analysis because what is the psychology of people who, um, who are trading, in this case, gold, right? So we're looking GC1, um, there's the... That's the symbol for gold futures, right? Uh, which take me also offers futures or train the gold. So take a look at it, guys, right? But what is the concept behind here? Technical analysis is all about trading uh, emotions when it comes to trading, right? The, the behaviors of traders. And if you notice that in the past, 
when everyone was bullish on gold, you know, look at that, right? Gold is just rising and rising and rising and rising, 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 going all the way up. So everyone was so bullish on gold. And when it finally reached this level, it suddenly, you know, for the next, well, from here to here is a two years, right? For the next two years, it just went down, went down, went up, went down, went up, went down, right? So the people who were holding on to gold here, you know, they are, they are in for a tough time, right? They are holding on to their positions. They are, they are cursing their luck and they're like, oh man, right? I'm in for a tough time over here, right? And when price finally comes back up to here, what do you think those people who are holding on to their trades over here, who got in at this price over here, what do you think they're going to do? Everyone is looking at this and in their mind, what they're thinking about is, oh man, the last time price reached the 2000 level or rather the 2080 level for gold, it gave me nightmares for the next one and a half years, right? It just went down and it went down and went down. I have a little bit of profits now. Price is finally, finally back up to here. What am I going to do, right? I'm going to cash out. I'm going to take my positions. I'm going to close off my positions. My long positions, I'm going to close it off. So it becomes, you know, you need to sell it off, right? And that causes the influx of sell orders that comes here and it pushes prices down, right? So it's, this is technical analysis, right? This is technical analysis. There's nothing in fundamental analysis that says the fair value of gold should be up here, 2086, right? There's nothing that actually says it there, but rather it's um, the technicians, the people who are looking at the charts and realize that, oh man, the last time price was at this level, it finally dropped and it took me one and a half years of waiting for it to finally come back to this level. And that is why I'm going to close off my position when it comes back here. So that is technical analysis looking at past price movements. This is, this is technical analysis at its core, at its simplest terms. Right. That means at its purest form, you know, it's just looking at um looking at price without all the fancy Fibonacci, without all the fancy trend lines, Ichimoku, oscillators, moving averages, gun angles, right? Without all of that, this is at its simplest term, technical analysis, looking at price, looking at the chart, and interpreting it. Of course, uh, other forms of technical analysis are like chart patterns, right? Uh, chart patterns, yeah, round number resistance, right? People are thinking, you know, um, sell it at 2,000, sell it at 3,000, big, the, uh, the concept of big figure, right? They call it big fig, right? Uh, it's, it, it's a, it's, it's a, um, it's called B-I-G, big, big fig, right? So that's big figure, right? So sometimes, you know, the, the banks don't say, um, can you sell it at 2086.35 for me, right? The, you know, they'll just say, you know, can you close off my position at 2080 or, you know, at 2100, right? It's, that's what a big figure is, right? So it's also technical analysis. That's, that's right, Richie, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just, you know, the way people communicate, right? Um, the, the, the big traders out there, they don't, they don't jump into the small little decimal points and say, yeah, you know, 1918.20, that's like close it off at 1900 for me. Right. And that's why usually around these round numbers, right? You see a lot of um see a lot of movements, right? Around this, what the 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 the, the if you want to sound a little bit cool, you know, you can say, yeah, it's just big figure, big fig, right? But anyway, now um this is a simplest term. And of course, you got stuff here, right? Look at this price action. Why did price come all the way down here, then bounce up? Was it a coincidence that price bounced up once here? Price bounced up once here. Price bounce up once over here. Price bounce up once over here. Price bounce up once over here. Was it a coincidence that price, um, where is it? Price shot down, all the way down, touched this level and shot back up, right? It's not a coincidence that these kind of things happen, right? There's a certain math, not, not even math, there's a certain psychology when these kind of things happen. And that is the concept of technical analysis, right? Looking at past, uh, past price action, right? Interpreting chart data to try to figure out when's the best time to get into a certain trade. So if I was buying, right? If I was buying gold, price, you know, price bounce up once, bounce up twice, bounce up three times, bounce up four times, bounce up five times, bounce up six times, and it's coming back down to here, just using basic um, probability theory right? There is a higher chance that price might bounce up than break through this level, 
right? So I would buy here and price bounce up, right? So this is retrospectively um, looking at it. But you know, if you know, if you if you're even uh, you know, a very beginner trader, you just go and look at the chart and you're saying, oh man, the last time price broke past this level was in 2020. It has bounced above this level seven times since, right? What are the chances that it's going to bounce up again? Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to take my chances that on the eighth time, it's going to bounce up still, right? Because clearly there's a nice support level there. So this is an example of supply and demand zones, right? This is an example of support and resistance. This is an example of price action. If people miss the move here, right? If you were a little bit wary and you waited for this move to occur, right? Price action, which is into, um, like candlestick patterns, using it to interpret um, price movement, we see that this is a huge um, sign of bullish, uh, bullish indecision, right? Price actually push himself up very nicely. And you, know, you can then get into another trade to push it up a little bit further. When it comes to technical analysis, though, the trick is in knowing is from playing one, uh, one distance, uh, one support to one resistance, one resistance to one support. I can let you know that it is much easier to play from this level to this resistance level over here than to play it all the way up to here. Now, let me, uh, let me give you an example, right? Let me give you an example. The further something is um, this, let's talk, let's talk about locus of control, right? Locus of control, right? So let's just say, let's just say, let, let me think of an example, right? Can, we can say with a fair degree of certainty that tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, the world, you know, uh, whichever the country you're in, whether you're in Philippines, you're in South Africa, you're in Switzerland, you can say with a fair degree of certainty that tomorrow will be like today, that your country will not be at war, right? Your country will not be at war. Your country will not be, um, you know, uh, you will still have food on the table, for example. However, so that is within your locus control. So if this is you over here, right? This is you over here. So my drawing is terrible, right? Your locus of control, right? If you're just predicting one day, what's going to happen the next one day? Your locus of control is really close, right? You have a high degree of certainty. Maybe you can do it with a 99% certainty that's going to happen, right? So this gives you more control, okay? Now, let's just say, let's just say, um, I ask you, in 10 years time, in 10 years time, would your country still be at, you know, would your country be at war? You know, what would be the state of your country be? You know, what the value of your currency be, right? From here, then maybe 10 years later, this is your locus of control. It's much further away. So maybe you can only say for 20% certainty or 10% certainty that, yeah, you know, I think my, you know, the Switzerland franc, you know, would still be a pretty strong currency. Right, I'm the Philippine peso, you know, I think the value was, was still whole, right? So, uh, you know, it's it. The further something is, there's a more indecision between where you are currently to where it is, right? There's so much in between here that can change, and the less you can predict the, you know, the the probability of this, you know, the locus in terms of your locus of control the lower your probability of forecasting correctly, the lower your profitability is, the lower your accuracy will be. So in terms of technical analysis, right, one piece of advice I can share with you guys is that it is much easier to focus on things that are within your locus of control. And usually technical analysis allows you to play from one support to one resistance, one resistance to one support. It's rare that you can, I'm just going to delete everything here, it's rare that, for example, I can forecast with a high degree of certainty, right? I can forecast with a high degree of certainty that price might bounce from here and it might come up to here, from here to here. It is much harder for me to forecast that price will come all the way up to here because there's a lot more things that might happen in between. Um, yes, Alan. So technically, the further the time frame, the lower the probability, but not necessarily the time frame, right? 
Well, yeah, yes, technically the time frame is one thing, but the number of bars in between where you're forecasting. Okay, number of bars in between where you're forecasting um, changes, changes the probability a lot when you're trading. Okay, that's a key consideration. That, 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 that's a key consideration. Okay. So in technical analysis, try to play from one resistance to one support, one support to one resistance. Let, let me see if I got a, I got an example over here. Right? I got a couple of examples on, for example, I think it was calling Euro dollar. Was it Euro dollar? Um, let me see this example here. Euro dollar, for example. Okay. So I was calling Euro dollar, you can see, right? It's a four hour chart, right? I was calling Euro dollar. This was a live analysis of my chart. So I was saying that, okay, price has broke out of this green line, has broke out of this descending resistance, blah, blah, blah. I think that there's a high chance that price might go from here up to this level at 1.09938, um, right? But I can only forecast with that much probability that price can hit this level at 1.0938. I, I won't forecast it to come all the way up to here, right? So let me show you how we play from one level to one level. Let's go look at Euro dollar. Let's go look at Euro dollar on the four hour chart. So this was the move I was calling, right? I'm going to show it to you here, right? Same move. Buy entry here, shoot up to 1.0925, okay? 1.0925. I did a retracement all the way down, right? And we 1.0925. You can see how price shot up to that level over here, right? 1.0925 about here, touch this level. And you notice the beautiful thing about that is that it touched this level and then it dropped back down, okay? It will be very tough for me to forecast that I can call the price to bounce up from this level, right? Which is what I did, I called for price to bounce up. But it's very hard for me to call price to bounce up all the way to here because again, locus of control, technical analysis, you can imagine the moment something is done, a uh, trend line is broken, a uh, support or resistance level line is broken. It has the most momentum, it's the freshest, right? Think about yourself, you know, buying, you're buying fruits, right? You know, it's the freshest when you first, um, uh, what's, what's the term? You first um, harvest it, right? That is its freshest. That's the thing with technical analysis. The moment it happens, that's when it, it's the freshest, it's the most powerful, right? As the time goes by, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker, right? So this, for example, this breakout over here, if price broke out over here, right? sorry. If we're talking about this trend line, oh, sorry. <laughs> if you talk about this trend line over here, and we say, oh, price broke out from this trend line and it's going down. The further it goes from the breakout, the weaker and the weaker and the weaker it gets. It's the most powerful when it first breaks out over here. Okay, and that's the concept of technical analysis I want you to wrap your head around, right? When technical analysis is the freshest, right? When it first happens, right? You cannot look at this technical analysis over here, right? You cannot, um, for example, I, I cannot look at this level over here and say that, because this breakout happened over here, I am bearish over here. It, it happened so long ago, right? So a lot has happened in between, in between. You look at all these things that happened in between, right? So you cannot look at something in the past to say that it's happening over here. It is when this breakout happened and it went down, this was very strong. This was very powerful because it happened. It just happened, right? So that's the thing that I want you guys to... Uh, to be very wary of that. When it comes to technical analysis, when it just happens, it's the strongest. And because of that, that is closest to what we touched earlier, your locus of control. All right, so this breakout here, you know, can see it happen. And let me just show you the very, very next analysis that I did, All right? Um, there we go over here. Hey guys, welcome back to another session of using tech. So it's the same thing, right? So we, we, make, the, we make the profitable trade, Right, I did my analysis. Price shot up to my target level. It's the same euro dollar analysis, right? And let's take a look. Let's take a look what happened, right? Let's just let me just zoom in. Uh, uh, fast forward to the end, right? And you can see, I will say my sell entry is over here, 
right? My sell entry is over here. My stop loss is over there. And I'm playing for price to go down to my take profit down here. We come to Euro dollar. What happened, right? Same thing happened. Price reverse from here, drop down to my take profit. Now, you notice that if I had called for price to went all the way up, I, were, I wouldn't have made money on the first trade and I wouldn't have, and I get stopped up. You know, I would still get stopped up because of what happened on the second trade. But what I did, right? What I did was I called for price to come up to here and then I called for price to come down to here. So I made money on this and I made money on this. That's the concept of technical analysis. You know, you need to, you need to trade in when it's hot. You know, it's like, it's like fresh bread, right? You take it, you know, when, yeah, I'm not sure how many of you guys walk past, uh, you know, walk past a bakery, right? The bread is fresh. I'm not sure how many Italians are here, right? You guys love your bread, right? When the bread is fresh, you eat it. When the pizza is fresh, you eat it. And it's great, right? That's what we want to do here. When the analysis is fresh, when the technical analysis is fresh, you trade it. You don't wait for it to turn cold, right? So you, you trade the fluctuations that happen in between. And this is what technical analysis is particularly good for. It is a little bit harder for me to call the move all the way up to here or call the move all the way down to here. But I know that because of what, you know, the breakout here, the breakout here, you know, you um, over time, I'm going to teach you how to get these kind of calculations correct. You know that you have a high chance that price might just shoot up to this level. And that is all you need to trade. Okay, you don't need to go for 100 pips trade, 200 pips, 300 pips. It's all about risk to reward. Okay, um, now I just noticed that I haven't been looking at my, at my Q&A. Okay, um, what's your recommended uh, um, take profit level? Can I explain the risk on, risk off or risk on? Okay, I'll explain all that later. Now, let me talk about, um, let, let me ask you guys, all right? Which trade is better? Okay, which trade is better? I'm going to give you two examples, okay? I'm going to give you two examples. Um, your take profit uh, is 80 pips, okay? Your stop loss is... Stop loss is... Uh, stop loss is 40 pips. Or your take profit... Your take profit is um, 24 and your stop loss is 12. This is trade A. This is trade B. This is A. This is B. Which one is better? Is trade A better or trade B better? Uh, a number of you guys are saying is B. Wow. B is better. Okay, some say A, 80, 40, 80, 40, make a little bit more pips, right? A little bit more pips, right? We've got, we got MT saying it's the same. I like, I like Andrew's answer. <laughs> Mateo, same the phone. Yes, guys, it is the same. It is the same. You take 80 divided by 40, you get 2. You get 24 divided by 12, you get 2. Your risk to reward it's the same. That's exactly the same. So you'll notice that there are a lot of a Telegram or Instagram traders out there. And they're like, look at me. I made a hundred pips of profit, right? Yeah. You know how many, anyone, this is one piece of advice, right? One piece of advice um, that I want to share with you guys. Anyone who says that they have, um, they use pips as their main measure of profitability, like how many pips you made, how many pips you made is not a serious trader. And the reason for that is because it's not only how much pips you make, but how many pips you, um, how many pips you risk to, to get it. For example, okay, let, let, let's just give an example over here. Okay. Let's just say I have this trade. This was my entry. This was my take profit over here. All right. Let's just say we managed to catch the trade and it went all the way up. You know, went all the way up to here. This was our entry and the trade went all the way up to here. Okay. We have this trade over here and we have the same trade. Just let me uh, resize this. We got one trade over here and I got another trade. Same trade, same profit, 
right? But my stop loss is here. Which trade would have made more money, right? Trade A or trade B if I was risking, if I was risking the same amount on each trade. Okay, you can see a couple of you guys answering now. No, no, okay, I can see I can see Alex saying both. Now, the important thing to consider here is this thing where you hold your mouse over, right? You click on this. Your risk to reward here, I'm not sure if you can see it, is 7.51. Okay, so if you're risking 1% on this trade, you have made 7% on the trade. Okay, over here, your risk to reward is 2.32. So if you put in 1%, right? And you and you hit your take profit, you make two point three two percent, right? So the concept here is that your risk to reward is super important. It's not something that most people look at. How much you risk versus how much take uh reward you get is super duper important. All right, guys. But um, so in terms of take profit, you know you must adjust your risk to reward correctly. But I don't want to digress too far. Let me just make sure I cover everything that we need to cover today. So I was I was talking to you about the you know different types of technical analysis. Okay, All right. There are some things that there are this thing called the on chart indicators. Okay, on chart indicators are stuff like moving averages. You can see the big moving averages. There are the Bollinger bands. You know you can see the blue ones over here. The Bollinger bands. These are the Bollinger bands. Donchin channels, there are the Ichimoku, there's a parabolic star. There are a lot of these things that are called on chart indicators. Okay. Meaning that they appear on the chart, you load it as an indicator. How easy is it to do it? Well, it's, it's really, really easy. This is a chart on Euro dollar. All I need to do is to click on indicators, right? Uh, click on indicators, Ichimoku cloud, bam, I got indicator. Moving average, bam, I got indicator. Moving average crossover, bam, another indicator. Right, if I want to search Bollinger Band, right, bam, I got another indicator. Don Chen channels, right, bam, I got another indicator, right. All the different indicators, but <laughs> the danger, of course, right, is that you might not be able to um to forecast price correctly because there are too many indicators there. Um. Now, um, Subash, I can see that you're saying that, uh, that the chance of A reaching 80 is much less than B reaching 24. Yes and no. Um, I understand the concept, right? So you're right in the sense, right? By talking about pure risk to reward, they will have made the same amount of money if you're risking 1% on each of the trades. Okay. Um, now, so yeah, so these are called on chart indicators. Right? Easy for you to load, right? And easy, um, and it does all the calculations based on price for you, right? So there's less. Um, yeah, you can't even see the chart, man. Once you're done, do this, right? You can't even see the chart. So these are, this is what I mean by on-chart indicators, okay? Now, the next thing that we want to look at is, of course, off-chart indicators, off-chart indicators. These are the indicators right, which are load off the chart, you know? And these are the stuff like here, you know, this is stochastic, this is MACD. This is um this is RSI. This is the volume ADX ATR. All of them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I know I like it's a little bit crazy, right? So I just want to tell you that there you should not be putting on so many indicators when it comes to trading. The 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 beauty is in the filtering, knowing which indicators to pick. Yes, Mark, we should only pick a couple. Right? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you which are the couple that I usually pick, right? But so the important thing is not to pick, um, it's not to pick indicators that say the same thing because that can give you a false sense of security, okay? For example, for example, what do I mean by that, right? Moving averages, moving averages are trend indicators, right? Ichimoku are trend indicators. Right, actually, Ichimoku is made up of moving averages, right? Just a different calculation put onto them, right? So, if you look at it that way, right? So, if I were to put on a moving average, right? And I would change the moving average to, for example, may I change it to uh, 50, right? I'll be like, oh, okay, price is below the moving average, is bearish. Then I throw on the Ichimoku, I'm like, oh man. 
price is below the Ichimoku. It is super bearish, right? And then you start to sell thinking that price will go down. Now, the problem with this is that your confidence is placed on, um, is wrongly placed. You, the, the indicators are giving you a false sense of confidence, right? What do I mean by that is because moving average is a momentum indicator, right? Moving average is a momentum indicator. The Ichimoku cloud is a momentum indicator. They are both telling you the same story, but just reading it from a different page. Right, from a diff is, is that the correct term? From a different page, a different book. Right, but they're both telling you the same story, right? Maybe one is told by um, the first guy, uh, uh, first guy's point of view, second, another one is read by a second guy's point of view, but they're both set, telling you the same thing, right? It's not so much whether it's lagging indicator or not, but yes, lagging indicator is one example, but you cannot use too much of the same indicators because it's going to give you a false sense of confidence, right? So in this example, right? In, um, this is an example of having a false sense of confidence. Another example is when you use something like the RSI and stochastic, right? So you're going to look over here and you're going to say, oh, stochastic is, uh, let me just change this to something a little bit more mainstream, Fodin, right? Fodin there, right? And go back, oh, stochastic is at 36%. Um, st uh, no, stochastic is at 8%, RSI at 34%, right? So it's overbought. Right, so because in this case, you know, we're expecting stochastic to bounce up, we're expecting RSI to bounce up, right? That means I'm price should bounce up, right? And that's the danger because stochastic and RSI are both essentially just oscillators, right? So if you're overbought, oversold, you know, they both can tell you the same thing, but they might not be accurate because they're both telling you just you know the same story but from a different point of view, right? Um Yes, exactly, exactly, Richie. Right? You know, don't, don't just go heavy into this into one indicator when they're just telling you the same thing, right? So it's very important to combine indicators. Yes, in combining indicators from different camps. You combine the stochastic, right? You combine it with the Fibonacci, you combine it with support and resistance, you combine it with price action, you throw in a momentum indicator like Ichimoku, right? You throw in a little bit of pivot points, right? Throw in, you know, all these different things they can throw in, even throw in correlation, right, to get a high probability setup. High probability setups are, are done when you throw in different indicators, each one telling you a different thing. For example, for example, let's let's just say in this example over here. Let me um let me show you an example. Um was it the euro dollar one day chart? Okay. Let me let me do a bar replay for you and show you from you here. Okay, let's just say we're doing analysis on euro dollar. Okay, guys, um, let me show you what I mean by uh, combining indicators correctly. Let me show you what I mean by that. All right, so we're looking at euro dollar, right? So you're looking at euro dollar like, hey, okay, I'm gonna draw a trend line. Okay, cool. Look at this trend line, right? Price has reacted one time, two times, three times. Valid trend line. Price might be approaching it one more time. Okay, I have it here. And then you load, and then you see, okay, I not only have a uh, trend line, I also have a channel, right? Something like a channel, I think. This could, uh, no, sorry. It's a little bit steeper. Something like that. Uh, not the best channel, but I say you got a little bit of a channel over here, right? Um, There'll be a channel over here. There we go. All right, so bearish momentum, right? And I throw on the Ichimoku cloud, right? I'm going to, of course, I'm going to remove, I'm just going to use the cloud in this example. We've got Ichimoku cloud over here, okay? And then I do my Fibonacci retracement, right? From here down to here, okay? Now I'm going to just leave the, oops, sorry. I'm going to just leave the 20, give me a second, 23% retracement, okay? So prices start to come up to here. Now when price reaches this level, okay? Let me show you. Price reaches this level, there is a Ichimoku cloud. There's a trend line. So we got one, we got two, 
right? And we got uh twenty three. Sorry, we got twenty three percent retracement, which is the third point. Correct. We can actually even do a Fibonacci, uh, this kind of um Fibonacci extension, shorter term time frame, right? And it shows us that there is a one to seven percent Fibonacci retracement that comes all the way up to here. So we got four reasons why price might come down. Okay. So this is what I mean by confluence. You know, you use retracement, you use extension, you use trend lines, you choose Ichimoku. Let's throw on an indicator, right? Look at stochastic. And stochastic also tells us that it is in an overbought region, right? So it should be reversing. So this is our fifth reason why price might reverse from there, right? <laughs> okay, Chris. Krista, I, I, I know um, it, this should be recorded on the Take New YouTube, right? Because it's a live webinar. So you, should, you guys should be able to rewatch it, right? But okay, now let, let's just take a look at this, right? So when this happens, what happens next? Bam, one time, two time, three time, four. What happens? Price reverses, reverses, reverses quite nicely. There you go, right? Price reverses nicely, right? And this is because you combine a trend line with a Ichimoku, with a 23% retracement, with a 1% to 7%, with a stochastic overbought, and then you throw in a divergence, right? You got five, six different levels, six different reasons why price is going to drop. So that's what I mean by combining indicators. You don't just throw random indicators in, like what I showed you guys earlier. You know, you, you don't just throw Bollinger Band, Donchin Channels, Ichimoku, Parabolic Sum, Moving Averages, then you throw in the stochastic RSI. You got all these, but oops, you got this all this bunch of indicators down there. You're gonna get um analysis paralysis, right? They're gonna be way too much, right? Uh well, it's you don't necessarily need six, right? Usually three to four is enough to confirm a decent move, right? Not to confirm, but remember in trading, it's all a game of probability, right? All you need to do is to have a higher probability than the mark than being uh, of being correct than being wrong. Okay, if you have 60% chance of being correct and a 40% chance of being wrong, rinse and repeat enough time, you'll be profitable, right? So the concept is to get as much confluence as possible, right? Then, you know, you have a good enough chance to be profitable, right? Chance, remember, probability of it happening, not confirmation. Okay, guys, really important thing for you to take note of, Okay. Then, of course, you know, I was showing you, you know, you got the off chart indicators, then we got the on chart drawings, right? We got support and resistance levels here. I told you, I told you before, if price bounce up really nicely, price is likely to bounce up again. So you got support and resistance, we got trend lines, channels, chart patterns. This kind of technical analysis is not something where you can click and you appear. Okay, what do I mean by that? This requires a little bit more um, finesse, right? This requires a little bit more um, technical know how. For example, right? Ichimoku can be as simple as clicking on, there you go, turn it on, you turn it off, turn it on, you turn it off. It's as simple as that. It's the same thing as moving averages. You can turn it on, you know, you can turn it off. Turn it on, you can turn it off. Now, when it comes to on-chart drawings, that's where it's slightly trickier because you need to know how to draw it correctly. For example, if you were drawing, let me just remove this. If you were drawing a trend line, Right. If you're drawing a trend line here, right, and your approach to drawing trend lines is different. If you don't take the wicks, right, and you just take the bodies, right, and you draw it over here. Okay. What you would have noticed, I'm just going to do a bar replay of this level over here. What will happen when price bounces up one time over here is that you're going to look at this and you're going to be, oh man, price has broke out. Time to trade and play a bullish rise, right? But the reason why this happens and price actually suddenly reverses and then you get stopped out over here, the reason that happens is because you didn't take the weeks over here when it comes to drawing a trend line. So when it comes to on-chart drawings, it's slightly trickier because there's a level of interpretation that you need to use. You, there's level of discretion. You can't just turn it on like this, draw me a trend line, and then you know it's automatically drawn, right? Draw me a moving average and it's automatically drawn. We can't do that, right? When it comes to on-chart drawings, it is slightly trickier. You actually need to, um, what's the word for it? You know, you actually need to draw, um, interpret it and draw it yourself. 
That's why it's, you know, it's not as easy. Okay? It's subjective. That's right. There's a lot more subjective. And that's why you kind of need to stick to... Um, we'll be touching on something on trend lines in the future. Definitely. All right? Um, but for starters, right, I, I can teach you how to draw it currently. But you notice that all you need to do is move your trend line a little bit higher. And then this would have been a profitable setup. You know? So when it comes to this kind of techniques... Support and resistance, trend lines, channels, chart patterns is more subjective. It's not something you can turn on and turn off with a simple click of a button. Okay, it's something which you need to practice, practice, practice over time. You know, um, I'll teach you the psychology of trend lines, of channels, of support and resistance, supply and demand, and over time you can practice it. And the more you practice it, the higher chance you can be of being profitable. Right, but remember, when com when it comes to trading, it's all about finding confluence. Right, so in this example, um, which I showed you guys over here, is not only about the trend line over here, right? Let me just draw again. It's not only about the trend line that caught price over here, right? It's the trend line, it's the Ichimoku, right? It is the Fibonacci retracement that comes down to here, which is the 23% retracement, right? Every single thing that lines up, you know, adds up, right? It, it doesn't, it just slightly increases the probability. So a trend line by itself might give you a 30% chance of being a profitable trade. If price is in the Ichimoku cloud, it might give you a 15% chance of it being profitable, right? If price is testing the 23% retracement, it might give you a 15% chance of being profitable, right? By themselves, 30%, 15%, 15% is not profitable, right? However, when you add them up, right, 30 plus 15, plus 15, you now have a 60% chance in this example of being correct, right? You then throw in the stochastic, which we talk about, right? Stochastic, you can see price is going higher, stochastic is going lower. You have divergence. You give yourself an additional 10%, right? You notice that price reacted multiple times from this level and it reversed nicely, right? Stochastic is an overbought zone. You give yourself another 10%, right? So 60 plus 10 becomes 70, plus 10 becomes 80. Now you have an 80% chance of being correct. That, of course, these numbers are taken a little bit out of context, right? But this is what I mean by confluence, right? Uh, stochastic, I usually go 2133 or 3433, um, right? But this is, the, this is what I mean by, uh, by using the confluence of, of, of indicators that adds up together, um, to see whether you have a high probability chance of being correct, okay? So you can see from here, you know, um, there, then there is the on-chart calculations, which I will touch on as a little bit more advanced, knowing how to use retracements, expansions, no, extensions, expansions, projections, Elliott wave theory, harmonics. These are a little bit more advanced, right? And we will be learning it in the future. What I always encourage you guys to do is don't take everything from here. Don't take everything from here and don't take everything from here, don't take everything from here. Combine them across different things. You do a little bit of on-chart indicators, you do a little bit of off-chart indicators, a little bit of on-chart drawings, a little bit of on-chart calculations, add them up like what I showed you, and it can give you a really high probability of getting a profitable setup, okay? So that's the key thing that you need to focus on here. You know, Don't just go all in, Onto, uh, in, onto one particular, just moving averages or, or Ichimoku or trend lines or chart patterns, right? So that leads us to this question, you know, which one works best? And that's a trick question, right? <laughs> but all right, if you were to make a guess, how many of you guys would guess which would be out of the, all the different things I talk about, which one would be slightly stronger than the rest? Do you guys want to, um, oops, sorry. Do you guys want to um, make a guess? I'll give you a few seconds to guess, right? Okay, I can see a lot of people say Fibonacci, trend line, trend line, moving average is one of the most popular ones, 
right? Um, sorry, I just I, I noticed like that the stuff just flying around here on my screen is <laughs> a little bit messy. Um, let me see where, where where did my where did my where did my chat go to? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I got I see answers now. We've got trend lines, Fibonacci, Fibonacci. Quite a number of you guys say Fibonacci, support and resistance, leading indicator. If you're talking about leading indicators, right? The the I'll give you a little bit of a hint here. Leading indicators, Fibonacci. A little bit, you can use part of the Ichimoku cloud as a form of a leading indicator, but Elliott Wave and Fibonacci are actually two really strong leading indicators, but it's very, very tough to use them correctly. We've got moving averages, trend lines, trend lines, price action, trend lines, support and resistance, EMA, tower judgment, yeah, demand and supply, um, confluence, yes, yes. Chandelier exit is more, um, Aaron says Chandelier exit, that's, that's more of a ATR. Uh, average true range is not wrong, but still uh, can kind of work too. Trend lines. Okay. The strongest, technically, one of the stronger ones, right? I mean, they, they still need to be used in conjunction with each other, right? They still need to use to be used in conjunction with each other. But my personal favorite is support and resistance and Fibonacci. Those two are pretty, pretty darn strong. The reason why I'm not too big a fan of trend lines is for one reason. And I'm going to show it to you over here. Right. So for trend lines, right, we know that different brokers have different price feeds, right? Especially when it comes to forex. Now the danger of that, right? So I'm going to show it to you over here. Trend lines are very subjective. Okay. Now um, let me go to a chart. Let me just find a chart over here. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, okay, so let's just say, you know, you got a trend line over here, right? So you notice that on different brokers, uh, um, the trend line, I mean, it's, it's not a good example over here, um, but let, let's just say, um, let me give you an example. Oh, okay, I got the perfect example. It's called using the ray. If this is the start of my trend line, Right, and you can see this is my this is my ending point. If price, you know, we understand different brokers have different price feeds, right? For example, take me as a pretty good price feed. Uh, different brokers, this might spike slightly higher, this might spike slightly lower, right? If it spikes slightly lower, you get this, you know, catch this trend line. But if it spikes slightly higher, you know, it ends very very different at a very very different place, right? So trend lines are very subjective because a little bit higher, a little bit lower, like even over here, a little bit higher, a little bit lower. You see your ending point is very, very different, right? So that's the danger when it comes to trend lines. It's less accurate compared to support and resistance level, right? I mean, volume, open interest, fresh data, very useful when it comes to futures, which is something that Tickmill has. You guys can go check it out. I personally love futures because they actually, even for FX, right? And, uh, you know, gives you vo accurate volume data, which you can use in trading, all right? Now, um, let, let's see which one works best. And of course, the trick I mentioned to you previously is to combine together, right? You need to combine them together. And um, this was an example of me combining them together. You know, Ichimoku cloud, right? You got the descending trend line, right? You got the 23% Fibonacci retracement. You start from here all the way down to here, right? And then, you know, you got, you can see price over here. It comes up, right? And then you can see. We expect prices to kind of drop from there. You know, got one point, two point, descending resistance, one, two, three points. And that gives us the highest probability of price actually reversing from there. It's the trick is to combine them together. All right, guys. And in, in future webinars, I'll be sharing with you guys how we can uh, utilize all this correctly, you know, to really, really get uh, an accurate forecast. Uh, to use technical analysis the correct way, to use trend lines the correct way, support resistance, Ichimoku, how to combine them together, right? Especially Fibonacci to find higher probability setups. All right, guys. And there's, there's one thing I want to, uh, there's, one, there's one bit of um, uh, a favor I need to ask from you guys, right? It's because uh, it's, it's something we do here quite often. If you don't mind, um, I'm going to launch this uh, little poll, right? Please share with me how you found today's webinar. Right, and then later I'll ask in the comments, right, um, what which areas you think I can better improve on, right, so that I can I can do my best to <laughs> to improve the webinars, kind of tailor it more and more 
uh, to your liking. If there, are, if there are reasons why, you know, it's not as good as you might have wanted it to be, let me know, right? And I'll do my best to kind of tweak it a bit. If I'm going too fast, let me know too, right? If my, my voice is, uh, you know, not clear enough, let me know. I'll do my best to try to kind of um, uh, tweak it and improve it so that over time, over the months and months and months, that we'll be doing webinars together, you know. Um, hopefully, you would um, you would benefit a lot from be benefit more from this, learn uh, and be a better trader. Yeah, but okay, guys. Um, thank you so much for again. Just gonna I'm just gonna wait for another uh, five seconds uh, before um, uh, before I close off the the poll. All right, got full one minute. All right, guys. All right, I'm gonna close off the poll now and poll. Okay, well, um, not the best, right? Not the best. We got 83% of you guys who voted 4 in 5. Thank you very much, right? 15% uh, uh, of you guys neutral, right? <laughs> and there's one guy who was a little bit upset with my, uh, with my webinar style. I apologize for, you know, if, <laughs> if, if there's something. But if anything, right, let me know how I can be a better, be a better teacher to you guys, all right? Because we'll be doing this week in week out week in week out right and um and i'll i want to know how i can you know teach you guys better all right thank you very much for your um for your kind feedback of course um uh, okay Tayfun, no worries thank you very much right so what i want to do right is is um head over to let, let me see if i can get the link for you guys right it's on tick meal right if you go to client tools you go to webinars over here right and there's this um and it, the the webinar is closed already. Um, the next one is this one, the 9th of May. I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna send it to you guys, right? I'm gonna send it to you guys. Oops, I'm gonna send it to everyone actually, right? Go check it out over here, right? Um, please go sign up for it, right? So next one, we're gonna touch a little bit of fundamental analysis. Then we really really start diving deep into support and resistance trend lines. Next week will be Cassandra, actually. Next week will be Cassandra because, guys, I'm going to be a dad. So <laughs> there's a 99% chance my wife would give me hell if I tell her that I need to do a webinar while I'm feeding the kids. All right. So next week, next, uh, the next round is a uh, very, very uh, much higher chance it's going to be Cassandra, right? Uh, give her your attention. Eyes and ears, right? She's a really, really good trader, right? Manages more than 300K of her personal funds. Uh, in my team, right? She passed FTMO three times. Uh, really great trader, really, really great trader, right? And Muhammad, yes, I do use multi time frame, right? We'll, um, for now, it'll be fortnightly. Hopefully, we increase the webinar. Webinars will be once every week. Um, um, yeah, to be once every week moving forward. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robert. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be a new daddy in 2022. If you start seeing me have massive eye bags, right? If you start seeing me have Massive eye bags, you'll know the reason, right? Because the kid has been keeping me up all night. I might be able, I might even be able to join you guys for the US trading session because I'm kept up all night, right? 1 a.m., 2 a.m., gotta feed the kid, right? Might as well trade. <laughs> all right, man. All right. Uh, but yes, thank you everyone for you know for staying with me throughout this entire webinar. I can see that almost 100 percent attendance throughout the entire mm -hmm. webinar, right? Thank you for your well wishes. Thank you for your congratulations, right? It'd be a fun time. Uh, it's my uh, first time dad, right? So who knows what's going to happen, right? Um, but yes, um, if you have any, of course, additional feedback you want, right? Just send it into the Tick News support, right? They'll do the best. Uh, they'll do the best to pass the message over to me, right? Otherwise, I'll be preparing for the next one. Um, if you want to find the replay, yes, you want to find the replay. I'm going to share my screen with you guys again. Um, there's a high chance it's going to work because I believe... Um, um, on YouTube, um, take me here. You can see that we have uh, oh, playback unavailable. I'll, I'll check it in a bit, right? Um, we, 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 we just started this uh, YouTube live, right? But I will, I will check in a bit whether it is recorded and it is streaming for you guys to watch. But you can actually check out the take me YouTube channel, right? The take me YouTube channel, and you should be able to see the recording. I'll make I will remind the marketing team. Right, I'll remind the marketing team to upload the webinars into a nice little playlist for you guys. All right. So yeah, uh, I'm don't, I don't have a Telegram channel, but you can join the Tickmill Telegram channel. I'm going to send you the link over here. Right, It's called the... If you guys have not joined it yet, 
do um do join it um the link the link the link the link is over here right go check it out all right it's take me official uh it's official take me telegram channel right go join it right we do send some announcements here and there great guys um one of the other great analysts that i have massive respect for patrick's over there too right so you know uh you can go check out his webinars who is really awesome the other analysts we have at take they are really great too you know, so go check them out right and of course right yeah it's been a great session thank you ayesha right thank you elton right thank you aaron right justin right um bargaf uh, wherever you're tuning in from south africa philippines uk switzerland thank you for tuning in for today's session thank you alan too right it's been a great session right i'm gonna go grab dinner <laughs> go grab dinner 635 over here you know oh uganda too right that's great stuff man thank you mark thank you emmanuel thank you agnes milic right whole bunch of guys at olivier it's been a great session do me a favor job the take new support tell them that you found it useful right and hopefully you can increase the frequency right and i can do more live sessions with you guys all right that's it for me thank you so much guys remember stay safe trade safe and peace out guys peace out all right see you guys next round oh it won't be me it'll be cassandra okay catch you guys next round adios guys bye-bye bye-bye